to this, the July edition of the OR program. OR is the acronym for Aging with Expectation, and the aim is to improve the life and times of the, the aging population. Today's topic is one that took me a little bit by surprise, but it is questions are the answers. I'm going to leave it at that and let you work out how it goes. <laughs> so now it's over to Stephen. Thank you. Well, as always, uh, just a pleasure and a delight to have this opportunity to be in conversation. And um, I've always loved the poet Rilke and how Rilke said that the questions we ask may actually be more important than the answers we seek. And he said, be patient towards all that is unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. So as I was thinking about the conversation, I realized that so often our focus is on trying to provide answers, trying to provide solutions. And so I became curious whether the answer maybe in the questions themselves. Uh, I, I think of the Gospels, um, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and that, that Jesus is asked 187 questions, but he only directly answers maybe three. And then he himself asks way more questions then he provides declarative statements. He actually asked 307 questions in the Gospels. So it occurred to me that, that maybe the journey isn't to arrive at certainty, or maybe the journey isn't to find the answers. What if the journey is learning to ask and sit in the complexity of good questions? And certainly I think as we age, at least I think, that the answers that perhaps were appropriate for one part of our lives may not necessarily be appropriate for this stage in our lives. And actually Abraham Heschel, the great Jewish philosopher said, we're closer to God or we're closer to meaning, we're closer to yeah, we're closer to meaning when we're asking questions than when we think we have the answers. You know, I've always been inspired by the, the civil rights activist, Ruby Sales. And Ruby Sales said, transformation doesn't happen in headspace, you know, where we try to figure it all out. Uh, it doesn't happen when we, we share our opinion. That does, transformation doesn't happen when we think we have the answer and then we're trying to convince the other person <laughs> that our answer is the right answer. She said, transformation happens in heart space when we ask really good questions. Like, where does it hurt? What are you most afraid of? What do you need? She went on to say that, that answers are conclusions that shut doors. Questions are invitations that opens doors to more and more possibility. And one last quote before I ask you some questions. Um, Mark Nepo, I love this. He said, questions, questions, really good questions are lanterns that we swing ahead of us the sea in the dark. So in the past, our conversations perhaps have been trying to provide uh, answers maybe, encouragement, advice. <laughs> so I thought, it would be, I thought it would be interesting rather than trying to find answers today or offer answers today on the wisdom of aging. What if we just ask some questions and just see what doors 
they open. So I'm just going to ask some questions and we'll just see what happens. So what have you discovered as you age that you didn't know when you were younger? Or what wisdom have you acquired? <laughs> I'm making a huge assumption here that you've acquired wisdom. Yes, that's why I laugh. The assumptions are there. What, what, what shall I say? You simply reflected back to you. What about you? What have you discovered? Um, I have discovered something that I didn't know when I was 30 is to not take myself so seriously. I think when I was 30, I was earnest and serious and um, I've learned to just to, to walk a little bit more lightly, to take my thoughts a little less seriously. That's one of the things I've learned. Uh, I've learned that maybe uh, when I was 30, it was all about building the container. And, and now I realize maybe what's most important is making sure what's in the container uh, provides meaning and, and purpose and contentment. Um, I've learned um, when I was 30, I thought I was gonna live forever. Um, <laughs> so I've learned, so I took a lot for granted. So now I realize that, that life is fragile. Uh, life is precious, life is short. And that every moment is a gift. Uh, every day is a gift. I don't think I realized that when I was 30. I realized now when I was 30, I didn't realize how important people were. And I didn't realize how important relationships were. And that somehow the relationships in my life I've now discovered are more important than what I achieve, what I accumulate, what I acquire. When I was 30, I was more focused on what I achieved. Um, and I realized now really it's about people and whom I love and how I am loved. So those are some of the things. How about you? Well, you started off on a fairly heavy, you started off <laughs> on a fairly heavy note. <laughs> what have I achieved? I don't know what's really important. What is really important? Is what I think important? I know, I see you nodding your head. Is it nodding? It is important or? There it is. It may be, it may be not. So try again. Yeah, so what I, what, I will jump to something. <laughs> Or lighter, lighter. But what I, what I heard in that in some ways is, you know, maybe when you're 30, I didn't know you when you were 30, but maybe when you were 30, what you, you may have thought what you thought <laughs> was important. But now what I realize in my relationship with you is what you think is really important, meaning um, you have made a pr profound impact on my life, and I know you've made a profound impact on a whole lot of other people's lives. So maybe what's most important isn't necessarily what, what I think, but maybe what's most important is making that difference in other people's lives. But let me come at this in a different way. Let's, let's warm up a little bit. So um, for you right now in your life, what brings you joy? What stops you in your tracks? And, and you go, ah, oh, yes. So what will happen if I say, I find joy is a bit difficult to find? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. What is it? Where is it? Where will I find it? Well, let me ask you, let me ask it in a different way. Have there been moments and where are moments when you are surprised by joy? Because joy can be difficult to find. And then every, every now and then maybe... Maybe it's a piece of music or, or maybe we're walking along and there's just this splash of color in a flower bed. Or maybe it's, it's uh, we're walking along or we're, we're somewhere and we hear the laughter of a child. Um, and we're just surprised 
by just a sense of joy. Do you, what are those moments for you? I suppose a very difficult question really to answer that seriously. The, the moment of joy is to recognize, to recognize a face. To recognize someone, ah, hello, I recognize you, I know you. And that's, that's extraordinary really, isn't it? Yeah. But we see and we say, oh, good to see you. I look out the window and I see cars going backwards and forwards. Where are they coming from? Where are they going to? What's important to us? What is really important? Very difficult. Who are important? Is the who important or the what? Hmm. Yeah. I think that's, that's such an important question because I think that's one of the questions. Again, this whole this whole experiment we're having together today is uh, is the beauty and the power of questions themselves that take it take us perhaps to a deeper place. So you just you just asked, um, you know, what's most important? You, I see these cars going to and fro. Where are they going? What are they doing? Um, you know, what's most important in life? So maybe that is. Maybe that is a good question to ask. What matters most in life to you right now? I still find it difficult to, to, to get a cutting edge there. What is important? Mm -hmm. So I put it back to you. What do you think? Do you have, do you have a, a, an easy answer? A, a, an accessible answer? What is really important? And I think the beautiful thing about that questions and I will engage that because I think the important thing about questions I think it's more about wonder than answers so you ask the question what's most important I just I even think asking that question is part of the answer <laughs> and it's it's wondering it's wondering about it so what is most important because I know for me what's most important it's so easy it is so easy for me to get lost in what's not important. It's so easy for me to get lost in the to-do lists and the trivial things. And sometimes just even ask, well, what's most important? Well, my relationships are most important. Well, gosh, have I, have I picked up that phone and called that person? Have I just dropped a note to tell that person how much I appreciate about them? You talked about recognition. Do I, you know, in the midst of my busyness, because I'm busy, I got a full calendar. So in my busyness, do I miss stopping and recognizing and making that connection with that person? So is what I'm doing, is that task that I'm doing or that errand that I'm running or that, that job that I'm trying to accomplish, is that more important than me stopping, pausing, recognizing looking that person in the in the eyes and saying how are you no really really how are you really so even to me asking that question what's most important there's deep meaning in that it stops me in my tracks to actually think about it does that make sense yeah it, is. it does and uh, th th there's a degree of Evasion evoked. I don't want to answer that question. Maybe it's too difficult. Maybe I don't want to think about it. Maybe if I think about it, it might confront me with the emptiness of my answer or the, the pointlessness of my answer. What matters? What really matters? It's a difficult. Thing. A difficult response, isn't it? Yeah. See, and that's really, really powerful what you just said, that even in stopping to ask the question, I might be confronted with a sense of emptiness. But what I hear in that is hope. Because more of what, what would be easy to do with that sense of, sense of emptiness, for me, what would be easy to do 
is to just get busy. <laughs> what would be easy to do is to eat food to try to comfort myself. What would be easy to do is take maybe more than one drink than I should take to just kind of deny or numb the fact that, oh gosh, there is this kind of empty space. Rather than asking these, these beautiful questions that are hard questions, difficult questions, well, what's most important? Which then might open the door to go, oh, what can I do about that? Can I, can I divest my energy from what's least important and then invest my energy in some of the things that are most important? Uh, my friendships, am I, am, am I investing enough time and energy in my friendships? Um, well, let me answer the question. Suppose mm -hmm. you would say, no, I'm not. Will I behave differently? No, I won't, because I don't. So we, we miss emptiness with emptiness. It's very, very negative, isn't it? Well, then I would probably ask another question <laughs> of, uh, can, you, you know, can you imagine six months from now, if you invested more energy in two things that brought you joy, what would that look like? And then I'd ask another question of what support might you need to help you to invest in those things that are most important because it's hard to do it by yourself. Well, we turn it around a little bit and say, is the question we're asking, is it important? Why do I want the answer? Do I really want an answer? Maybe not. Maybe I prefer to live in the blank. Most of us prefer to live in that sort of hazy blankness of life where we might ask a question, but quickly move on to something else, something else something else. So we're not very good at facing ourselves. We're not very good at listening to ourselves. In fact, we're not very good at listening to the other person. Do we really listen? Or am I, am I living beyond the space, beyond that space? Does it matter? Will it all be the same next week? Over here. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's so beautiful what you just said, though. You said two things that I heard is one thing you said is we're not very good at facing ourselves. And then the other thing is we're not very good at really listening to others. And that's where I think the beauty of questions come in. Because it's one, you know, to me, it's a very different thing to say, you know, so if we're not very good at facing ourselves, there are things that we really don't want to face. We really don't want to face that emptiness. It's not going to be very effective for me to go, geez, Francis, you should be doing this, <laughs> you know, for me to be telling you what to do. I mean, that's, you know, if I'm start to tell you what to do, uh, we all know the result of that. <laughs> no, no, don't be telling me what to do. But I think a different spirit, a different spirit towards ourselves and towards others is more of a, you know, I wonder, I wonder what's most important to me right now. I don't have an answer today, but I'm curious about it. And I'm curious what might happen if I somehow found the energy to devote a little time to what's most important and, and helping other people. Think of the think of the conversations we have with others, you know, the conversation where we're telling others how they should live their lives, we're telling others, here's what's wrong with you, versus asking questions um, of, you know, I wonder, I wonder what you're most afraid of right now. 
Or I wonder, I wonder for you, here's a good question. Here's a good question. I wonder for you right now in your life, where you're at, what would make for a really good day? What would that look like? What are the things that, that you would love to be included where at the end of the day, before you went to bed, maybe it wasn't a great day, maybe it wasn't an exciting day, maybe it wasn't, but it was just, you know, today, boy, this was a good day. So what, what makes for a good day? What would you hope to happen in that day for it to be a good day? Yes. Yes. I hope for some surprises. Hmm. A surprise. That something will be different. And so everything will be just the same as it was yesterday. Or this happening the way I expect it to happen. The way it should happen, it happens differently. Yeah. Something, something quite different happens. And you say, oh, I didn't expect that. I love that. Which then leads me to another question. <laughs> yes. When is the last time you did something for the first time? <laughs> yes. When is the last time you did something for the first time? Is that what you said? Yeah. Maybe I say, I don't know. Is it important? What is important? Ah. Ah, what is really important to us? But in, listen in listening to you, what I heard you say, what was really important is surprises. Yeah. You know, somehow getting off the, getting off the treadmill um experiencing something you didn't expect uh having those moments of going oh that's new or didn't expect that uh, which then leads to the question of again well what's what's the one thing i can do today that's new that's different you know i walk my dog this way or i go for a walk this way every day what if i went that way for me i drive to work the same way every day well what if i went a different route and paid attention what if you did if you think that thing through it's all the same that 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 it happens it happens. There it is. Does it really make any difference? And that's that's a question. What is what is something that makes a difference? Are we interested in making a difference? Are we interested in things being different for ourselves? Because we keep on repeating till at some point in life we stop and say, "I'm being a horrible bore. I'm, I'm boring." <laughs> I'm probably boring you now. How do we break the boredom? How do we break in ourselves and say, I'm going to do, do something different? See, what a great question. It is, it is a question, isn't it? Yeah. What will I do? What yeah. will I say? How will I make things different? So I look out the window and there's a man putting things in his, in his bin. Every day he puts things in his bin. Every day, more things in his bin. Someday I have to go and empty that bin, it'll be different. But then <laughs> I come back to putting things in his bin again. Bin it. How are you things? So we're saying, ah, it's different. Yeah. And it's different and enjoyable. And brings out the people a little bit of freshness. Yeah. I love the, um, what I hear, but part of what I hear in that, I love Mary Oliver, the poet. There's a line from one of her poems where she said, uh, says something along the lines, I was a bridegroom 
married to amazement. Oh, yeah, nice. So what if we ask ourselves at the end of every day, what amazed me today? And if, and if we answer, well, nothing. Then if we ask ourselves, okay, what, what might I do tomorrow to open myself up to a little bit of amazement? Or, yes, yes, or what can I do or be tomorrow whereby amazement might just happen? Yeah. We, yeah. we sometimes have in the mindset of how can I get things to be different? You know, as, as little kids often say to their parents, what can I do? I've got nothing to do. What can I do? I need something to do. And we say, well, go and do something. Is it doing? Is it thinking? Is it... Don't do anything. Sit for a while. Just be. Yeah. And if, if you're just being, what does it do to us? One of the things I've always really appreciated about you is your sense of awe, speaking of this, this program itself. Um, A-W-E, um, and one of the things I've really appreciated about you, you know, rather than wearing a, a black robe on a Sunday morning, you wore a white, red, and purple robe. Um, but not everybody did that. Rather than just having boring, traditional windows depicting biblical images, you commissioned this beautiful art that invited people into a sense of awe and 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 um and music you know you you would introduce music that invited people to just pause and just allow this music to to open something for you today so that's something that I've really learned a lot from you is, is how important it is to be amazed. You know, uh, Abraham Heschel, Heschel, again, that Jewish philosopher, said the foundation of faith is not belief. It's not certainty. It's awe and wonder. He said the goal of the spiritual life is to live in radical amazement, taking nothing for granted. So what, a, what, what, a, what an interesting question to present to ourselves, particularly as, as we age. Because I know when I was 30, it was all about what I achieved, what I acquired, what I accumulated. And today I'm kind of more interested in what amazes me. What am I awake to? What do I notice? And what is important? How other things can run past us? Did we notice? Did we see something important? So often life passes us by and we didn't notice. We didn't see the wonder. We didn't see what was there to see. This is heavy talk, isn't it? And that's where I even like, again, the, the power of questions. I mean, it takes a question like, what are you most grateful for? To stop and think about and notice the things you're grateful for, that we take for granted, that we don't notice, that we just pass by. So it's a power of a question like that. Well, what are you grateful for right now? I might say, I don't like that question. I, say more. I, I'm uncomfortable with that question. Mm -hmm. So what, what's a question that would interest you? And we often, we're often not sure. We, we're saying and thinking things and we don't realize that they're, not, they're not very important or they're not very interesting. And we're just... Filling in space, filling in the space. Yeah, but 
Yana, yana, yana. <laughs> so how would you ask me that question differently? So if, if you're uncomfortable with the question or don't like the question, what are you grateful for? And I, I, I appreciate that because it, it kind of feels like an Oprah Winfrey kind of question, really kind of, it's like a, you know, start a gratitude journal. Um, so, 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 so if you don't like that question, but it's yet, it's still important to be amazed. It's still important to notice, which I'm hearing you say, how would you ask me that question in a different way? Yes. Yes, that put, puts me on the spot, doesn't it? <laughs> they earn, they earn, they <laughs> All right. How will we put it? If, if I can't ask you what's important to you, what would, what would the question be? Very difficult, isn't it? To stop and say, well, what is the critical question? What is the question we'd like to ask the other? And I'm really, I'm really interested in the answer. Well, the answer would make a difference to us both. Very difficult. So imagine if I'm sitting in your, in your, in your therapy room, you're in your therapist chair. You're a brilliant, yet you're a brilliant therapist. And what you have noticed is that I don't notice. What you've noticed is kind of a deadness in me. And part of that deadness of spirit in me is I stopped paying attention. I stopped seeing the flowers along the path. I stopped listening to grand music. Um, I stopped appreciating the people in my life. And there's kind of a, kind of a, yeah, a deadness of spirit, a flatness in me. What's the one question that you would want to ask me if I'm sitting in the chair across from you that you think might awaken something in me? I'm making you earn your money today. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm thinking, what is the one question? What is the one question to which I, I really would like an answer? It's difficult. Because what, what, what do I say? I'm not interested in your answers. So I don't want to, I don't want to ask the question. But what do you think the question would be less about what my answer is, but what do you think would open the door for me that I might see something new? You talked earlier about you want to be surprised. Well, what, what, right now my door is shut. So what might open the door where I'm surprised? I think it's one of the important questions. What is, what is the one door that we need to open? Hmm. And you really want to know the answer. Tell me the answer to that. Tell me the answer. What is the answer? So you sit there. Where are you sitting at the moment? Are you in your, are you in your study? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm in my study. You're in your study pretending to be very knowledgeable. And I'm in my study pretending, pretending to be very knowledgeable. And we both are, don't know what a question to ask. What is the one question? What is one a question we'd like an answer to? What is one question? I love how you, ref I love how you reframe that though. Of, of, you kind of put it back on me to say, well, what is that door you want opened? So that got, for whatever reason, see, interesting thing about question, that got me thinking. <laughs> okay, what is, what is the door? What is the one door that feels closed right now in my life that I would want open? And to me, that's the beauty of question. Rather than you thinking you already have the answer to that, you put it back on me. Okay, what is that one door that feels closed? that I would want opened. 
I'm going to spend the rest of the night thinking about that. And I'll, I'll, I'll swear at you tomorrow when I don't sleep tonight. <laughs> yes. well, let me ask you another question. Can I ask you another question? What's the one, what's the one uh, pearl of wisdom that you want to make sure you give your grandchildren? When you come to think of it, I don't know. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that they will discover in themselves, that they will discover in themselves the question that needs to be asked. That they will discover an answer to something they hadn't thought about before. Is that worth doing? Perhaps. Or we say it doesn't that matter. But that is so beautiful what you what I just heard you say, because I think that's been the greatest learning that I have had as a parent is not to impose <laughs> what I think, but to help my children discover for themselves what that wisdom is. And that's kind of what I heard you say is, is you'd want to let your grandchildren know you will discover for yourself. It's not so much what I can tell you you will discover for yourself what's most important. And that's so, it follows that I believe, I must believe that they have, that they will have the capacity to do that. I believe that there is an answer for them to, to discover. But, but even in that, how beautiful, I mean, that is the gift, that is the gift. You know, that is the gift is, I believe in you. Um, I believe you do have the capacity to discover this. Um, I believe in your wisdom. I believe in your strength. I believe in your potential. I think that's far more better than any answer that you give. Well, right now I'm fiddling with a screw in my, in my uh, drawer on my desk. So I believe that I keep turning this screw, it will either tighten or it will undo. So I believe in the future of this little, little screw in my desk. And you say, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Leave it. Close the drawer. Forget about it. What do you say to that? No, you're likely to say, no, 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 don't do that. Stay with it. Stay with it. What am I likely to discover? That there is some purpose. That there is some point in turning this little screw around here. Yes? Close the drawer. Forget about it. What are you? I think that brings me back full circle to the first question of what do you know now that you didn't know when you were 30? And probably what I'd want to tell my own, what, is, what not tell my children, but what I would love my children to discover is like turning the screw, like there's just one, there's just one direction it goes. To me, what I've learned is that there's no grand single purpose of life that I somehow have to discover. What I know now, I think that I didn't know then is that maybe the purpose of life is just simply a life of purpose. I, I just yesterday I was going to work and I stopped at my favorite coffee shop and I got my, um, my, tall um, almond milk chai, which I'm addicted to, an almond milk chai tea. And so I was opening the office door and I was late to a Zoom meeting and I was already kind of anxious about the day because it's gonna be a really full day. I was juggling my computer bag, juggling the keys and my chai. And as the door opened, my chai went flying 
and created this puddle of mess on the carpet in the office. But I was late to the Zoom meeting. And I, was, I woke up that morning arguing with the world. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had that. I just woke up kind of irritated and arguing with the world. And I just dropped it coffee so the trajectory of my day was already determined i was what is the australian author the children's author i can't remember her name but alexander and the no good very bad horrible terrible day uh it's an australian children's book and i was going to have a no good terrible horrible very bad day and and um the maintenance maintenance engineer at the church came behind me i didn't see that he was behind me and he just said to me with a smile, he said, don't worry, I got this. Go ahead to your meeting. Such a simple thing. Such a just, such a just a simple act of kindness. Completely changed the trajectory of my day. Completely changed it. All of a sudden I felt this, ah, this kind of, this kind of lightness. And so to me, one of the discoveries is maybe that's the purpose of life. You know, just a lot of good moments, a lot of moments of kindness. Oh, well, see, aha moments. Aha. Is it, yeah. Uh, oh, oh. Man, be so, you huge. I mean, I began thinking, well, he changed the trajectory of my life, my day. Maybe not my life. Cleaning up my coffee maybe didn't change the trajectory of my life, but it definitely changed the trajectory of my day and got me thinking, huh, how might I change the, tra the trajectory of somebody else's day? You know, so I could, so after my meeting, I went back through the coffee hut because I, my coffee was all over the floor. And I thought, so I paid for the person's coffee who was in the car behind me. Well, and I, had to, I, I had to meet you. I had to meet you when you're buying coffee. You'll pay for my yeah. coffee. Yeah. 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 Surprise. Surprise. So, yeah, that's back, back to what you were saying is what makes for a good day? Surprise. Yeah. Something, something I didn't expect. It's, it's different. From what I had expected, yeah. All right, well, what's, what's new for you in life generally? Well, what's new for me is on my porch, there's a hanging flower basket. And a robin, you know, the bird, a robin, built a nest in this basket and laid four eggs beautiful blue eggs. And so I've been observing this robin um, sitting on these eggs each day. And then when I go out to walk the dog, the robin kind of leaves, goes a little bit of distance into the tree and squawks at me, like, don't come near my eggs. And, um, and what I've observed is, is I was, as I was sharing earlier, life in the United States right now, is tense. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of fear. There's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of anger. Uh, there's a lot of stress. Um, life just feels really tense. It feels really fragile. So I've been thinking a lot about this robin protecting these eggs, trying to bring life into the world. And so I've been thinking a lot about, well, how can I live my life that way? So that's the question I've been asking myself. How can I live my life in a way that might protect others, that might protect life, that might bring life into the world? So the biggest questions I've, I've been asking myself every day is, you know, between, between life's challenges and how we respond, you know, there's, there's a space. So often that space feels razor thin. 
and I'm reacting and overreacting. So the, so the big question I'm asking myself is, well, how can I widen that gap? And how can I live my life like that Robin from a place of love and wisdom and compassion and not react? You missed that one word. And with patience. Ah, ah, yeah. I think I purposely missed that word. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not very good at it. Ah, uh, yes, ah. Uh, you know, that, have patience yeah. waiting for the eggs to hatch. Wow. Allowing the eggs to be there without getting anxious about scratching them and saying, come on, come on, produce, produce. Just be there. The egg has to be there for several days, several weeks perhaps to allow it to generate new life, wow. new possibilities. So, so I, might have, I might have just irritated you beyond measure with all of my questions. But this conversation uh, for me was worth it for the one word you just gave me, uh, patience. Because I just realized that's what I haven't had. I haven't, I haven't just been taking that deep breath and being patient. So thank you for that. Patience has a I, way of, of avoiding us, or we avoid it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, when I'm reacting, when I'm, when that gap, when that gap between the things that happen and how we respond when that gap is razor thin, I'm not very patient. <laughs> So I need to widen that gap. Um, so I suppose the next question is, how do we widen the gap? You know, for me, it's, uh, it's taking a breath. It's some of the things we talked about in terms of what makes for a good day. It's listening to music. For me, it's, uh, it's just spending time with, with people that are important to me. Uh, for me, it's my dog. Uh, my dog widens that gap for me um wonder amazement curiosity john o'donohue maybe this is great words to close on he says may you experience each day as a sacred gift woven around the heart of wonder to me that would widen the gap may you experience each day as a sacred gift woven around the heart of wonder. So the beauty of questions, the question I would ask is, well, how can I receive today as a gift? What fills me with wonder? Where, where is my heart tender? I've had a real tenderness for this Robin for some reason. Um, and it's been really life-giving. So thank you for your patience <laughs> with my questions. Um, I, uh, I've really enjoyed our conversation. Yes, I did too. It's not only the conversation, it's the presence. Yeah. There, suddenly out of nothingness, your face appears, you appear, there you are again. And the person appears, that's good, it's good. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. So may you have a good day. <laughs> may, you have, may you have many good days. Many good days. Okay. I look forward to that. And I look okay. forward to the next time. I will, I will. Okay. Goodbye. We started off asking a question, but did we get an answer? That becomes the question. I found <clears throat> this very difficult to try and sum up, but one thing that, uh, that did strike me was there are more questions than there are answers. And maybe, just maybe, that uh, 
uh, the poet Reiki was correct in saying that the question is more important than the answer because what the question does is makes us think about the, the vast range and realm of possibilities that might answer that question. And of course, what answers what one person's answer might be another person, might not be another person's. And the other thing that came to me was that the best thing to make a good day is to get a pleasant surprise. And uh, I'm pleased that Stephen got, got one that he didn't expect. <coughs> With that, I'll say thank you to uh, Dr. Francis McNabb and to Dr. Stephen Kosky for once again giving us something to uh, really think about and uh, hopefully act upon. And uh, so until next, next month, which is August, uh, I'll say cheerio. Well, before you go, make sure we, we express our gratitude to you because without you, this wouldn't happen. So thank you. You do a tremendous piece of work there. Thank you. You are too kind. Oh no, I meant it. Okay, goodbye. Bye now.